On August 21st, 1986, 1,746 people in Lake Nyos, Cameroon were found dead. Something terrifying happened I didn't even think was possible. So what happened? Why did it happen? And can it be prevented? Let's come up with some experiments that'll help us explain what happened in the area surrounding Lake Nyos. I think I can show what happened in the village, but why it happened and what was going on in the lake, I've never seen anyone do, but I have an idea, I haven't tried. I think it'll work though. If it does, we'll have both what happened in the village and why it happened in the lake. So what happened? If I add a little bit of baking soda to a flask and then add a little bit of vinegar, acetic acid, we can produce some carbon dioxide. And we can see that once the bubbles stop fizzing, it looks like the beaker's empty. But if I take a match and candle and put them in, we see that the candle immediately goes out. What happens is that carbon dioxide is more dense than the oxygen and nitrogen in the air. So the carbon dioxide displaces the oxygen and nitrogen. And we need that oxygen that got displaced in order to breathe. Our mitochondria use that to make our energy. What could we do to make this invisible gas visible? Well, if we roll up a piece of paper, we can make what I've heard called a smoke waterfall. If we light one end, instead of the smoke drifting upwards like normally happens in convection currents, the smoke will fall downwards. Smoke falls right out the bottom. And if we put the smoke waterfall over our CO2 beaker, we can see that the smoke intermixes with the CO2 and we start to be able to see this invisible CO2 gas with the mixed smoke particulate. Normally the smoke doesn't just hang. See, it'll fall and drift away. And it's just crazy to me that when I do this, that you can see that the CO2 moves almost like a liquid. It's really wild. This is the CO2 that's mixed with the smoke. Now we can see the CO2 with the smoke particulate. We can also show how dense the CO2 is here again by pouring some out. We can see that it falls out like it's a liquid, like water's being poured out or something. And this more dense CO2 is again the big problem that happened around Lake Nyos. If we take a candle now and light it, we can see that when it gets to that smoke that is the CO2 region, it immediately goes out. Out. CO2 extinguishes the flame. This is exactly what happened in the villages surrounding Lake Nyos. Now we can visually see that more dense CO2. It's about 44 grams per mole, and that's slightly more dense than the about 30 grams per mole that is oxygen and nitrogen that make up the majority of air. So the CO2 just bumps them right out of the way, and then there's no oxygen available to breathe. So now why did it happen? Where did the estimated 1.5 million tons of CO2 come from that filled up this area surrounding Lake Nyos? Well, it came from Lake Nyos. Let's see if we can see what happened. I got an idea here. I've never seen anyone do this, but I think it will work. If I take a density tank and I get some warm water on the left side, and then I get some soda, I got this Shasta Cola. The Shasta Cola is both cold and it's more dense than the water. Water is about one. Uh, whereas the Shasta Cola is going to be slightly greater than that because it has sugar and other things dissolved in it. So we'll fill up each side of the density tank. And then when I lift the divider, what happens is we see the Shasta Cola start to slide underneath that less dense warm layer. And this is really cool because it starts to show us what is going on in Lake Nyos. Lake Nyos is about 200 meters deep. And when you get deeper, it gets colder and there's CO2 that gets trapped at the bottom of that lake. And where's the CO2 coming from? Lake Nyos is on this magma rich area that's pumping CO2 in it continuously. And so that bottom area continually gets filled with more and more CO2. It'd be like our Shasta Cola continually is getting more CO2. And eventually the liquid can't hold all that CO2. Or you can have some kind of disturbance. You can have like an avalanche or earthquake or heating. In this case, I have a Mentos that I'm going to drop in. So when we drop in our Mentos and we cause this disturbance, we can see what starts to happen. That CO2 that was trapped down in the high pressure cold area at the bottom of Lake Nyos, it starts to bubble up. And as it bubbles up, it gets trapped like we saw in our first experiment is really dangerous for breathing. And we can even show it's dangerous in this experiment. If we bring a match in and bring it above the lake, we can see that the match goes out. 
the CO2 settled above the top of the lake and displaced that oxygen. So part three, can this be prevented? There's some interesting things that are going on now to try to prevent this from happening in the future. We're taking the water that's down at those bottom layers that's really saturated and cold with CO2, and we're just lifting them up. We're pumping them up higher, and when they get high enough, the gas will naturally sort of effervesce out. It'll just bubble out of the solution, bubble out of the lake. But at a rate that's not dangerous. The problem that I've read in some of the papers seems to be that that's not going quite fast enough. So we're still getting buildup of CO2, but not as fast because we're off-gassing a lot of it. The general consensus that I seem to be finding is that we need to do more of that and do it a bit faster. Well, what would you do? What ideas do you have? There's certainly other solutions, and maybe you got a great idea that could maybe be implemented around Lake Nyos. Well, try this experiment yourself. Uh, collect more data, get some pH density and temperature data, and any other data points that would be interesting. Stay curious and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming experiments that we got going on. I'll see you soon.